All right. I am with our guest this week here at Poker News, a recent World Series of Poker.com bracelet winner, one Nick Gaugenti. I said that right. You know, like I've been practicing here off the air. Yeah, close enough. <laughs> uh, how you doing, man? You, like I said, you won a, a bracelet here over the weekend. And uh, I know that was, a, that was a big deal for you. I've known you for quite a while. The poker world's known you for a while. You've got results dating back uh, quite a ways. You know, what was it like to, to finally get that bracelet? Oh, man, it was, it was an amazing feeling. I was pretty happy to get it off the bag. Um, got a lot of friends, got a lot of bracelets. So being one of the few that don't is a little, you know, they needle me a lot. Sure. Which is fine. I like, I like a good needle. So <laughs> I'm still getting needled. There, you know, I got a couple of friends saying, you know, it's an online bracelet. It doesn't count, you know, but no, I, I'm, I'm for sure counting this one. I mean, I, I can relate to that. I won a bracelet in a closed event, the casino employees event. Seven oh, I years, remember. Yeah, seven years ago. I and I, yeah, I caught a lot of shit about, uh, you know, it not being a real bracelet or what have you. But you know what? It was a real WSOP event. It was tough. You know, these fields were tough over the summer. I was reporting oh. them for Poker News. No, any 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 tournament you win is tough. It isn't easy to win a tournament. I don't care who's in it. You know, you got to run real real well and uh, play really well. So, well, and it's, any this tournament the, you win is earned. The the tournament that you won was the event number twenty nine, two thousand dollar no limit hold'em deep stack tournament, seven hundred and forty seven entries, one point four million dollar prize pool. I mean, a two k deep stack is, is full of crushers, and I think that was evidenced by the final table. In fact, you know, having covered every single event this, this summer, I would say that this was the toughest final table of the summer. You know, aside from yourself, you had Matthew Parry, Ari Engel came in third, uh, Ryan Tosic was there, Brian Deutschmeister, Vinny Pahuja, Rory Brown, James Gilbert, and, uh, you know, former November Niner and online bracelet winner Tom Canuli was the, the final nine at this final table. And it was, it was stacked. And, and did you feel that? Did you feel it was a tough competition? as you were playing? Uh, I mean, I expect nowadays in poker, as you get deeper in these tournaments, that they're all going to be fairly tough fields. You know, this one, a lot of well-known players, you know, and you just got to expect that as you get deep. Even I play a lot of these tournaments in the Midwest and, you know, Ohio and Indiana and Michigan and stuff. Like the, the field as a whole, you know, not the toughest, but as you get deeper, it's, it's usually, you know, over half the, half the players left are, you know, good players, you know, it's, it, it's just the way it is in 2020, you know, there's just a whole lot of good players. Yeah. I was, I know exactly what you mean. And, you know, looking back at your results, I seen you started getting Hendon results um, in 2006. And like the, the difference between what a final table might've been like back in 2006 compared yeah. to now, you know, it's, it's just a remarkable, like I said, most everybody knows what they're doing if they've managed yeah. to get that far. I mean, if, if you understood, you know, poker just a little bit in 2006, you were head and shoulders above the competition. You know, and nowadays, everyone understands, you know, push, shove, uh, just ICM. Everybody understands the basics of tournaments. And that's all you really needed in 2006 were the basics to be one of the better players. Right. Now you're based in Ohio, right? Yeah. Now where 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 did you go to play these online brace events? Did you go to New Jersey or did you make the trip out to Nevada? Uh, me and my buddy uh, Joey drove to uh, New Jersey. We didn't want to fly, kind of avoid the close quarters. Sure. Uh, you know, with all the COVID and everything, but the, we drove to New Jersey, played at Caesars, just to make transactions a little easier. It was nice. I have never been to New Jersey in the summer. It's always been, you know, winter. Right. It was, it was actually, the boardwalk was beautiful, you know, beach, everything was great. And, and how many events did you play? Did you, were you there the whole month or did you just go out for a short period of time? We went out, I think I played 11 events. I, we went out, um, sorry. Yeah, no worries. We went out, um, like the, the 20th I think <clears throat> and I played all 11 events from there and I didn't I didn't make it past 
registration. I was getting max bullets in before registration. Oh. And it was incredible. I think, I think two events of the, of the other 10 that I made it past registration without max bullets. And one of them was the limit 08 event, which, you know, I didn't expect to be too difficult to not get max bullets in, but yeah, it was, it was either, it was either maximum pain or the win. Right. But then so, you, <laughs> sometimes one of the, uh, I guess, benefits maybe, and we can talk about this is by not cashing any other events, we didn't know who you were. So you have your screen name and in order for us at poker news and others in the wider poker world to know uh, the WSOP releases the real names of everybody who cashes. And so we have a, you know, a big database of, real names and their screen names. But since you hadn't cashed in any, we didn't even know as you were playing, as you won the tournament, I didn't learn until after the fact that it was actually you who won. So I'm assuming most of the players didn't know who you were either. You know, do you think that might have, that uh, anonymity might have given you a little bit of a edge at all? Oh, I, um, of course, I, I was pretty, like I was telling Joey, I was like, I'm glad nobody knows who I am. You know, I, it's, Having information on people, whether, you know, because I've played with Ari, I've played with a few of the guys at the table. Having information on people is a big part of poker and them having no information on me and me having, knowing who they are is is a huge edge. I mean, the tournament was super short, like stacks and everything. So like there wasn't much poker to be played, but like any information is important in cards. So yeah, being, be, not being, like was great. I enjoyed, I enjoyed it. it. Now, talk talk a little bit about the actual you know play down at the final table. Were there any you know big hands that really made the difference for you? Do you, th in, you know in your opinion on your way to victory? Oh man, there's a, there's a few. I I mean I was pretty lucky. Uh, King ten of hearts. I, I shoved like I think nineteen blinds five handed into ace king. I was I was fourth out of five. Um, and I hit a 10 on the end. I mean, that was, that was a massive hand. Um, the threes versus ace queen when we were three handed was mm -hmm. huge. Of course. I mean, that was a lot of equity. He was three bed me a lot. You know, he was playing really good. He was owning me. I, I was over it. I shipped on him and I actually had a better hand in hell. Uh, yeah, those two hands were huge at the final table. Before that, I got in. I got in with ace ace five of clubs against uh, the buttons ace eight, and we chopped. That was pretty important. It wasn't for my whole stack, but it was a big, it was a big. Sure. Big. But like I said, it, these all these hands are all ends. Like the tournament, the tournament didn't have a ton of play at the end, you know, which was fine, which was fine with me. You know, I I prefer tournaments like that. It's it's just easier. Sure. Just, yeah. It, Math, the math is all, you know, done out for you. So, just play, just play the math. And the the final hand of the tournament was was nice. You ended up flopping the seven high straight. He had a, a jack seven suited for top pair, and uh, you guys get it all in. That's got to be a pretty good feeling. To I mean, he wasn't drawing dead per se, but I mean, he was after the turn there. Yeah, the turn, the turn, the celebration happened on the turn. I didn't even see the river. I had no idea what the river was. It was. Uh, I mean, I'm just sitting there, I bet, and I'm just sitting there, you know, saying, go all in, go all in, go all in, and he did, and I was just like, I just snapped it off, and felt it felt incredible. We're just jumping and screaming. It was it was a fun time, man. Like, it's, I've been around for a long time, but, you know, I've got, those those feelings are few and far between, so you have to really enjoy them when they happen, you know, and you have to soak it in. A lot of times, people get right back into playing, you know, which is fine, but for me, I you're gonna you're gonna lose a lot more than you're gonna win, so when you win, you kind of just want to have that winning feeling for as long as you possibly can, because you're gonna you're gonna lose a lot in cards. It's just it's just how it works. So the next day was the the seniors event, so there was no event to play. But you were in New Jersey, and it probably finished at like six a.m. in the morning uh, when you actually you know scored victory. Did you do anything to? To celebrate, were you able to go to sleep right away? What was it like that you know, twenty four hours after the win? Sleep, sleep was not happening. Um, um, me and Joey, we went out, uh, walked the boardwalk for maybe a couple of hours, walked on the beach, 
Um, answered a bunch of texts for the next three or four hours. Uh, went out to eat a few times. I probably didn't get to sleep until like nine or ten the next the next night. Wow. Yeah, but and then I I think I slept for like three hours. It was a like I was burnt out. Like this it happens to me a lot. I won't get a ton of sleep. So yeah, I'm still kind of recovering, honestly. So we drove home. We played the next day, and then we drove home, and I didn't get a lot of sleep. I haven't. I've maybe since then I've total gotten like 20 24 30 hours of sleep i'm not sure but, <laughs> well you've got uh, a wife and some kids right so that probably keeps you busy yes. as well. oh yeah uh i have a great wife she she really um she's perfect for me playing cards she she allows me like with with little fight to just do what i need to do when when i need to do it like I, I spend maybe 75, 80% of my year with my children. And I'm, I consider myself a stay at home dad uh, most of the year, but I travel for cards. And when I have to do that, she doesn't really say a word. And uh, she really accepts, you know, my job, which is great. She's been with me since the beginning. We've, we've known each other since, we've known each other since fourth grade. Wow. I, I told my mom I was going to marry her when we were in fifth grade <laughs> and she didn't, uh, I chased her pretty much all the way till senior year of high school. And she finally gave in and, uh, she, we've been together ever since. Wow. That's, that's, that's very cool. And, uh, yeah. it, it, I want to ask you then real quick too. I know last summer, um, the world series of poker the live version in Vegas you had a, a decent year. You almost, uh, you know, captured a bracelet on two occasions you ended up finishing fourth in the 10K Omaha High Low Championship for 140K. And then a little over a month later, finished third in the 3K Horse for another $85,000. Uh, obviously, nice scores to have during the summer. But I'm curious to know, like, coming that close to a bracelet on two occasions, you know, was there a little disappointment associated with that? And then, you know, fast forward here now a year and you get the bracelet. Is there a little bit uh, a feeling of redemption, so to speak? Um, so my, my years at the WSOP, I've been going for, I think, 16 years now. Uh, I've never really focused a ton of my time on WSOP events, maybe like seven to 10 a year. And last year I was just, I was fed up and I was just, I just said, I'm going to go for it. And, uh, I saw action for the first time ever I sold a package and I played you know, that all the 10 Ks I could, I could find and every event trying, cause I was, I told myself, I said, if I can't make a run, if I could play 40 to 50 tournaments and I can't make a run, I don't deserve to, you know, play these events. And I'll just focus on cash, which is what I've done most years. And um, yeah, so it was a great feeling to make those runs. Uh, it was kind of validating, I guess. Uh, the, the 3k horse was, I sh I had I think two thirds of the chips three handed and I played some uh, pretty atrocious hands that I regret to this day and uh, uh, so that one hurt that one hurt a lot that one hurt a lot um, the 08 uh, I didn't completely love how I played the final table either so that one hurt but just not as much as the horse the horse I felt like I I was gonna win and. It just didn't work out, I guess. But uh, coming back and winning this, I, I actually felt a lot of momentum coming from uh, the runs I made last year. So I felt really good about the 2020 WSOP, and I was really pumped to play everything. I was probably going to play the 50K uh, Players Championship. Um, I sold for it last year. Uh, I got really sick hmm. and didn't think it was a good idea. I actually had to get an IV, which oh, wow. didn't work. It didn't work at all. <laughs> I was just dead sick. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, I was pumped. I thought I I knew I was going to make a run at a bracelet, and for it to be online, no limit hold'em, it, it's kind. It's just funny. It's funny to me. Like I didn't I didn't see that coming, and a lot of people a lot of people said the same to me. 
Well, yeah, I certainly uh, would have put the odds on money and then some sort of mixed tournament in the live realm. But uh, it, it was right. certainly exciting to learn after the fact that you, uh, you know, that that screen name was you. Um, it was, a, like I said, a very tough final table. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate you, you know, taking time out of your day, out of your schedule to to chat with us. I think, uh, you know, as soon as you won, I said, I wanna, I'm want i going to want an interview because uh, this is a long time coming. And uh, I was very happy to see it. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, a lot of a lot of great words from a, a lot of people. I I truly respect. So it's it, that's that's been uh, like I've seen some great things written about me, like just random friends, and it's it's meant a lot to me. You know, to know that I've portrayed myself in a way that you know people respect, and I I that's what I've always tried to do. Really, is uh, have have a good name in cards is, is a, is a big thing to me. It matters to me. I, I've, you know, I've never owed anybody. I've never, I've, I've never been broke is one of the biggest things in cards. I've never had a ton of money in cards. Like I've always grinded and it's, it's tough. Like I've, I've been, I've been with a lot of people that are better card players than me that can't, that can't survive and can't stay out of people's pockets. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a rough, if it's a rough job mentally, physically, and, you know, financially, it's, it's a, not many people can, can withstand the, the pain, I guess, <laughs> that comes with cards. For sure. Well, if those of you listening want to keep on top of Nick's poker adventures, you can follow him on Twitter at quad fours underscore kin. So at quad fours, underscore kin and uh you know nick hopefully come the next live wsop whether that's later this year or in 2021 hopefully you'll be making a run at uh, bracelet number two